Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. You can see from the title here that the subject is the histogram. One of the most underestimated parts of modern photography in my view and one that you ignore at your peril. There are two questions I think we need to answer. Why is the histogram important? And how do we learn to read and understand the information it's giving us? Let's deal with why it's important first. The histogram can be shown on your camera's LCD screen for the image you've just taken. It can tell you if you've captured the best exposure from that scene. And this is information you need to know. It's too late when you're sitting in front of your computer. The histogram displayed in your image editor when you open the image on screen will guide you to what editing sliders you need to use and to some degree how far to move those sliders to get an image that contains good color, clarity and contrast. So the histogram on the camera and the histogram in our software are pretty important for all photographers. They enable us to develop consistency of exposure and consistency regarding image quality. It's also a fact that if we capture the best exposure we can we have less work to do in our image editor. Any of the work we do is going to be quicker and easier and another step towards consistency. The photographer who comes home with an exposure that's not so good has quite a lot of work to do in their image editor and when we try to do this image quality begins to decline because we're forced to push those sliders further than they want to go. Now the second question that I posed at the start was how do we read the histogram information and learn what it's telling us? Well that's going to come pretty naturally in time but you do need to take note of the histogram every time you shoot an image and when you're working on your images in software like Photoshop and Lightroom. What's going to happen is you'll gradually build up a correlation between what you're seeing in the histogram and what you're seeing in your image. So the histogram represents all the pixel values in an image but it's just a graph. The graph is shown to us as black or dark pixels on the left hand side, light or white pixels on the right hand side with midtone values in the center. The height of the histogram mountain shows how many pixels in the image have that particular tone. So generally speaking, unless we're shooting a black cat in a coal cellar or a white cat in the snow, we're looking for a histogram that stretches from the left to the right and is as tall as we can create it. Let's just consider the histogram we're looking at here. Even though we're looking at the histogram in isolation from the image, I can tell an awful lot about the image that this histogram comes from. I can do that because looking at the black mountainous shape, I can see it just touches the left hand side, which means that this image has some solid blacks. Not many, and certainly not too many, but it's got solid blacks because I can see them reaching to the far left. When we look over to the right I can see exactly the same with the highlights. I know I've got a good range of tones here. This is going to be an image with good contrast before we even do any work in an image editor. In the center I can see most of the pixels peak in the center and I know from a little bit of experience that's going to give me lots of scope in Photoshop Lightroom or any other editor. As we look at this histogram the first thing this tells me is whatever image this histogram comes from we're going to have some problems with it. It could be that it's beyond redemption. 
we've got some blacks on the left hand side we can see the histogram stretches there but not many of them we don't have very many midtones either everything is stacked up on the right hand side that's going to indicate that we have lots of light tone pixels in the image that have no detail at all we're going to have big problems in an image editor trying to get a quality image from this histogram and the image that goes with it it's pretty safe to say that this image is massively overexposed as we move on to this histogram this tells a very similar story but here all the problems are in the shadow areas we don't have any light pixels at all we could do something about that but we're going to have lots of dark pixels in the image that are solid black if you've ever tried in your image editor to raise detail from these solid areas of shadow you'll know just how damaging it can be to your image quality now as we look at this histogram I can tell quite a bit about the image that this histogram comes from we can see that we've got quite a high peak in the center so we've got lots of mid-tone pixels here to play with we can see though that we don't have good strong whites on the right hand side and we don't have good strong blacks on the left hand side but that is something we can address in Photoshop, Camera Raw or Lightroom or any other image editor earlier on I said we need to learn a correlation between the mountainous peaks that we see in the histogram and the image in question well here's a good example of it I know looking at this histogram exactly the type of image that I'm going to get it's almost certainly an image that was shot in overcast or cloudy conditions because the light was even and soft we don't have very strong shadows but of course we can do a bit of editing to gain those because the lighting was soft we don't have brilliantly white highlights either but we can do something there too so this is telling me that I've got an image that's pretty flat in contrast but this is an image we can work with now here we come to the main purpose of the histogram it allows us at the taking stage to be sure that we aren't doing damage to the highlights or the shadow areas it allows us to avoid the situation where shadows become solid black and highlights become pure white there's no coming back from solid white or black in our image editor so looking again at this shape this isn't an uncommon histogram view as I've said it's telling us that the light is a little flat overcast conditions may be but it could represent the golden hour in the morning or the evening when the Sun has yet to rise and has just set now this is not a bad position to be in it's saying that you have the best you could have got at the time you were shooting the camera is going to show us the histogram on the LCD screen for any image that we view but for a more practical use of the information it gives us we can often turn on what is called highlight warning and that's what we're looking at here when we take a shot and for the few seconds that we have to preview the image any highlights that contain no data at all will flash black what we're seeing here is pretty typical but it's telling us that this shot will be overexposed and that any detail in those clouds is going to be difficult if not impossible to recover now as you can see here we're looking at exactly the same image and we're looking at the levels in Photoshop but we're looking at the histogram and here we can see what we saw in one of the histograms I showed earlier we've got shadow detail we don't have a lot of mid-tone but all of the highlights are stacked up on the right hand side so now you've seen the histogram in relation to the image 
you can see that the sky is too bright and that areas of it are pure white and we've even seen evidence of that on the back of the camera before we walked away from the scene. Now of all the fancy things that our cameras can do for us, for me this highlight warning would be right at the top of the list. I think this is invaluable because after taking the shot that highlight warning is saying don't leave the scene yet you've got this wrong you need to reduce the exposure. So let's do that and look at the next shot. So what are we seeing here? Let me tell you what I see. I see just about a perfect exposure for my style of photography. Now what I mean by that is this. I drop the exposure down and we can still see a couple of tiny little areas that are still flashing. But what those tiny areas are telling me is one, I can deal with very small areas like that without any difficulty and two, I've got as much light into the shadows as I possibly can because if I open up the aperture just a little more then I'm going to get more detail in the shadows but my highlight warning is going to get worse. If I drop the exposure to be even less than it is now and I get rid of those couple of little tiny highlight warnings flashing there then of course the sky is going to get marginally better but I'm going to add some problem to the shadow areas perhaps between the plants of the sunflowers. So here I think the exposure is just about right. When we look at the image with its histogram we can then start to see the correlation between the two that I was referring to earlier. As we look at the histogram we now don't have the peak on the right hand side that we had with the previous and we can see evidence of that in the sky. There's the correlation. Now when we look at the histogram on the left hand side we can see there's a little bit of a peak in the shadows but nothing we can't recover from. We've only got the thinnest of lines on the left hand side and we can see what's causing those, the shadows between the plants. The shadows are down the bottom of the image forcing our attention upwards into the flowers so in this case we've got a pretty good histogram. And an interesting fact that's probably worth remembering is when we view images our eyes seem to be able to accept blocked up shadows a little easier than highlights where there's no detail at all. All cameras will allow you to see the histogram on the LCD on the back of the camera. Many will display in the form of the graph we're seeing here but many cameras will allow you to view the histogram in the form of the highlight warning. So if you do have the ability to turn this on with your camera, I would do so. Earlier in this video I said that the histogram you see in your image editor can guide you to what editing sliders you need to use and to some degree guide you on how far you can move those sliders too. I've also said that the purpose of the histogram at the taking stage is to avoid losing the highlights and shadows to a point where we cannot recover them in our image editor. Now this losing of the highlights and the shadows we also get help to do that within the histogram in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom or other software. It gives us this help via the highlight and shadow clipping warning. If we go up to the top left and right of the histogram here, we've got two tiny boxes and when I click them, you'll see them outlined in white. What that allows us to see is if we're going to lose any highlight detail, we'll get a graphic display and the same with the shadows. Now that's quite easy to demonstrate with this image. If we look into the sky, if I increase the exposure, I don't have to go too far before the clipping warning tells me that in that part of the sky I've now destroyed all pixels that are there. So we're getting guidance on how far we can move these sliders. If I do the same with the blacks here you can see a similar effect with the shadows.
What I'd like to do next is to just take a look at a couple of images and their histograms in both Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. Although I'm going to use both programs to demonstrate with, for what we're doing here, they're absolutely identical. The odd thing here though is I've covered up the image, so you can't see the image that the histogram refers to. So without viewing the image, let's go up to the histogram and take a look. If I move my cursor into the histogram, as I hover over the center portion, you can see that we do get a highlight and we get the word appear just below my cursor called exposure. If I move to the right, we can see it's telling us that this area represents the highlights and this area represents the whites. If we go the other way, here it's saying this area represents the shadows and this the blacks. So we're getting quite a bit of guidance here on what we need to do with the sliders down below because the sliders are exactly the same as the shaded areas we've just looked at. So without looking at the image because we've got it hidden, what is the histogram telling us? Well it's telling us that we probably need a little bit of exposure. So let's move up to the exposure slider, move it to the right while looking at that histogram. Now perhaps we need a little bit of the highlights, just a tiny amount and maybe a small amount of the whites too. We don't want to go too far and go up the right hand side. See that peak going up the right hand side? So probably somewhere around there. And if we look at the blacks, well, maybe we could put a little bit of shadow and blacks in there, but it seems to be reaching the edge pretty well. So let's leave that where it is. I'm going to guess at a little bit of mid-tone clarity, and I'm going to guess at a little bit of mid-tone vibrance as well. By covering up the image and manipulating it without even seeing it, what I'm trying to do is to emphasize the relationship, that correlation, between the histogram and the image that we're working on. Because if we can manipulate an image and get it half decent without even viewing it, surely that's pretty good evidence of how powerful that histogram is. So now I need to reveal the image to you. Here we have a shot taken in the late evening. I think the sun had actually set by then. And what I'm going to do here is just touch the P key so you can see the starting point and the histogram that goes with it. Look up at the top right. I'll touch the P key again so you can see the edits that we made. There you can see a much better spread of the histogram. We've got a couple of peaks, one left, one right, but when we look at the image it all makes sense, doesn't it? We've got quite a light sky there, nothing that a graduated filter wouldn't fix. And of course because we're shot the image in the early evening we've got some darker tones too but it doesn't look half bad for an image we manipulated without even viewing. The intention of course is to start learning that correlation between the histogram and the image it represents. It will take a little while but nothing worthwhile is ever gained easily and this is well worth our effort. Here I have another evening seascape, rather hazy, rather high key. Now we can see that reflected in the histogram. So I suppose one thing I should say is we shouldn't follow the histogram blindly. It's a guide, but we also need to view it in relation to what we're seeing. Here the histogram is saying that I probably could do with just a little less exposure but it does depend on the look I'm going for in the image. I could go for a high key look. But if I just drop that exposure a little bit, I could decide to spread that histogram by increasing the highlights and the whites. Once again, we don't want to go too far. But we do have quite a bit of scope here. Maybe a little bit with the shadows and a little bit with the blacks as well. Again, we don't want to go too far. We can jump around and adjust these sliders in any order. A little bit less exposure, and I'm looking at the image carefully. Bit of clarity, a bit of color, and we've got 
result even before we start to think about using radial or circular filters and graduated filters. Now as you can see here I've got an image opened up into Lightroom. When we look at the histogram we've got exactly the same options that I demonstrated in Adobe Camera Raw. So what is the histogram suggesting? Well here it's suggesting we need perhaps a little more exposure. So I'll just tweak that to the right while looking at that. We've got rather a lot of light water here so we are going to have a peak a little bit to the right. That's all part of that correlation I'm talking about. The highlights, I think we could deal with some of those and some whites too. So we've put quite a bit of sparkle into the image. I don't think we need too much more with blacks, but maybe we could just raise the shadows. If you look at the feathers of the pelicans, maybe if we just raise that a little bit, there we can see the detail coming through. A little bit of clarity for contrast and certainly a healthy amount of color and then we've got our image. The bulk of the image editing done, the rest would be fine tuning, cropping, maybe holding in the edges and the corners of the image. That strategic editing that we like to do on top of the basic editing. Let's bring this video to a close with this image because this image is evidence that we weren't paying attention to the histogram at the time we took the shot. It's quite obviously underexposed and even if we were just concentrating on the sky it's still got some underexposure there. When we look at the histogram at the top right we can see it's well stacked up on the left. We've got to lift the exposure but we don't want to destroy the sky. We probably would want some highlights, we would want some whites we would probably want to increase a bit of clarity and certainly maybe even the color but we've got real problems with the shadows now I can step the shadows up here so if I push the slider up when we look at this at first glance we think well that's not too bad is it let's take a look at this enlarged and see exactly what we have in that shadow area well there we can see it looks pretty ugly doesn't it? If I double click the slider to remove all of the shadows we've got some noise in there before I even touch the slider. So we don't have very far to go before we start to seriously impact the quality of the image. So the histogram is very important at the time we press the shutter button and capture the shot. It's also pretty useful in our image editors when we get the image onto the computer. But I think this image is evidence for me to say that it's probably far more important at the taking stage because we can't repeat that. When we're sitting in front of our computer we can repeat our image editing. There's a lot of advice that's given to photographers on the internet. Much of that advice is claimed to be the most important that you need. Sometimes it is. But if you wanted to elevate just one thing to the top of your list, the histogram is it. If we'd had the histogram back in the days when I was shooting film, I would have understood exposure a lot quicker than I actually did.